Okay. So, uh, yeah. Let's so start. Yeah, one of the reasons we're all laughing here is because uh, this is actually take two on this video. Uh, we, we were doing great on the first take. Well, we were like maybe five, ten minutes into it. And uh, my computer decided, and uh, my wonton clicking decided, that it was time for my computer to update, which then just destroyed everything we did. And now my computer's out of commission, so we're actually recording this on my phone. So if the audio is a bit off, that is why. Um, and if the leveling is a bit <laughs> off. Uh, I've just basically stacked a bunch of boxes on each other and propped my phone up against something because I don't own a phone tripod. But apparently that's going to need to change. Star Wars Armada box, Bloodstone boot box, and, and then a BB-8 uh, remote control speed. droid. Oh, no, that's a remote control droid. Oh, that cool. might come out for the release, the Legion release. Oh, that'd be yeah. neat. So, anyways, uh, let's get to the introductions and kind of idea here. Look, see, my my clap is <laughs> rumbling the whole thing. We have rumble effect on this video. Um, but basically, uh, thanks for for coming back to the channel. I'm Anthony uh, again. Obviously, if you watch my other videos. Uh, and today we're going to do a different kind of video. It's uh, 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 hopefully what will be a new series that I'd like to call uh, At the Player's Pub. And uh, maybe in the future we'll be doing it at night over a beer as opposed to uh, on a bright sunny morning uh, all sharing a nice little little cup of espresso here to get us going for the day. Um, and speaking of the day, uh, we're wearing our green, although you, Autumn Willow is a little short sitting down. But uh, there, there we go. Yeah, we've all got green because it's St. Patrick's Day today. Uh, and and uh, my friend Joshua here taught me something very interesting today. How do you say the thing in Gaelic? Take two. Lale padre sona div. That's the one. Which means Happy St. Patrick's Day to all of you. That's right. It's also pagan, um, but that's <laughs> fine. Oh, we we loved it. Thank and you. yes, and and uh, Josh is wearing the the fun green hat because he told me that the actual color for the Irish is blue, which is why he's wearing a blue shirt. Because, you know, he's a history major, so it's an obligation for him to do that. Uh, but I don't care. We worship the, the leprechauns here, so we're wearing our green. Um, and you got to, my, you could see my cool shirt before on the computer. You can't really see it now. Yeah. Um, but that's all I'm going to say about that. It'll be a mystery. Um, <laughs> so so the point of, of today's video is, is twofold. Uh, one is to just talk to players who play RPGs about what their experiences have been playing those types of games. Um, and then more specifically, uh, if you've watched my other video series, the DM Journal uh, on Out of the Abyss for the 5th edition D&D uh, &D campaign, which I talk about all the time, but I've never shown. So this is, this is the campaign book for it. Um, the, these are some of my players that actually play with me. And so you'll get to put some of the faces to the names, which is cool. And on top of that, uh, you'll get their take uh, as opposed to just my take on what it's like been playing through the Underdark being chased by the drow and all that fun stuff. So that's what we're going to do uh, today, and hopefully it'll be a recurring series. So the first thing we're going to do before we dive into stuff is just get a bit of a quick intro on uh, these two fine human beings that are sitting with me. Um, and just because we started with Josh and our initial take to switch it up for the three people at this table, let's start over here. So this is my friend Autumn Willow. Um, so how, how long have you been playing RPGs for? Uh, if Josh's system counts about three years. Three years, okay. Oh wow, I didn't know that it was like... Because you and I played together for what, a year? Yeah, and then, but, but Ryan's quest went for about a year and a half. Right. And Josh has, like, this system he made. That's where it's right. Like, it's like a homebrew, correct? It's dumbed down D&D, &D, so okay. it's, like, less stressful when you're first starting. <laughs> <laughs> less it's intimidating. Like, there's, like, no rules. It's two sheets. You look at the two sheets. That's all you can do. <laughs> right. Now, one thing I should note is that when she says Josh, she's not talking about this Josh, who you'll right. meet in a minute, but her fiancé, Josh... Because we like to keep things confusing here yeah. for all of the viewers out there. Yeah, Bard and the Bard. Yeah, and the that's right. Bard, Bard, Bard the, the yeah, Bard the Barbarian and Ken the Bard. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So, so three years of playing RPGs, um, and so in terms of what types of RPGs you played, it sounds like it's just D and D, and then um, Josh's homebrew system. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah, okay. Just those two. Okay, but you're into other kinds of games as well outside of RPGs, right? Yeah, I'm really into like pretty much all games. Um, Dominion, for the most yeah. part. <laughs> Little Dominion, Dominion obsessed, Dominion. but that's yeah. cool. Everyone's got their thing. At least yours isn't cocaine. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Buying markets. <laughs> Buying markets. Yeah, that's right. It's just, it's Less good financial planning. Yeah. You would never know <laughs> that your fiance is in investments. <laughs> so that's good. Okay. Um, anything else you want to throw out there to the people on the internets? I mean, earlier it was mentioned, so it's not going to make too much sense, but mm -hmm. I'm really not into theater. So much <laughs> Accurate, so, yes. where in grade nine, I actually, one of the options was to take drama, mm -hmm. and I 
was so stressed about being in like a thematic situation where I had to like be around people acting yeah. that I asked the the offices if I could take like a grade ten tech class just so that I could avoid acting. Because what grade was <laughs> what grade was that in for you? That was grade nine. <laughs> wow. You're like, I don't care, make it more hard, just not this. <laughs> just, just anything but trauma. So yeah. things have changed a lot since then. <laughs> yeah. You made your pretty stellar D and D performances. Yeah, and you do like some low key cosplay stuff, do you not? Like I've seen some pictures of you going to conventions and whatnot. N- yeah, like just last year basically. Okay. I mean Star Trek um seven of nine That's right pretty much the only one that i really so had. you went from please don't look at me to everybody look at me no <laughs> <laughs> like i'm a lot more comfortable like yes. in that kind of situation but my main thing was you don't necessarily have to be into drama right. to like it it's like harder to Right. get started off. But. And, and I think that that's one of the things <laughs> that's going to be interested in, in doing a, a little episode like this where, you know, from the perspective of uh, like an organized D&D uh, system, you've only really been doing that for about a year and a half or, or a bit more than that now because yeah. we're playing mine. Yeah. Um, and, and not having that theater background, which is now a good segue to say that my other friend and player here, <laughs> Josh... Um, does have that kind of a background. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about your experiences with role-playing games and just games in general the same way Autumn Willow did. Sure. Well, the first game I ever started with, of course, was Pokemon. <laughs> and Pokemon brought me game to... Game Boy or cards? Uh, cards. Okay. And Game Boy. Then Game Boy, okay. And cards brought me to North Bay Games and Hobbies. Mm. And that's where I first saw Warhammer Fantasy. And yes. so ever since then, I've been to tabletop miniature games. Um, much to the dismay of my wallet and all the money I could and, have, and, right and now. your parents, and I could your be wife retired, and... right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. right. like a uh, king, yeah, like, <laughs> being like a king. I would be a very sad king if I didn't have my money. <laughs> That's <yeah. laughs> the king of sadness. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I first started with role playing games in grade nine with D and D. So basically, uh, actually, I think it was more grade ten because it was the year after you left. Right. We, we formed a D&D club. Right. Because everything amazing happened after I left. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We went to the same high school, by the way. We did. Are you from North Bay? No. Where are you from? Um, do you know where Owen Sound is? Yeah. Do you know where uh, Flesherton is? No. Okay. Kind of near Flesherton, but that, is kind of wait, near Wait, Flesherton Owen Sound. sounds like something out of D&D. <laughs> yeah, Flesherton <laughs> sounds like a troll camp. <laughs> basically is. Do they grind bone to make bread there? Like, Take the path um, to Preston. That's basically just, there's a high school there, and then I lived like three like villages over. Like You're just making it sound more like D&D. Yeah, basically. Okay, In that's the middle fair. of nowhere, just a picture, a bunch of fields and a bunch of cows, and that's where I was. All right. From. That sounds awesome. Well, I don't often get to say welcome to the big city living here in North Bay, but how long have you been here now, then? Um, These are all things I didn't know, by the way. This is not for your benefit. This is for mine. I guess eight years. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I guess the only reason I asked because, like I said, Josh and I went to the same <laughs> high school, and I was, wasn't sure if you went to one of the high schools that maybe had a rival with yours I could start poking you on. But... Well, unlike these two, I'm North Bay born and raised. <laughs> I am not born but raised, I, I suppose. Um, so I guess maybe as a very quick sidebar is we live in uh, North Bay, Ontario in Canada, not to be confused with the strange mirror Ontario in California in the States, which often we get wrong search for, which is kind of funny. Um, and, uh, and North Bay Games and Hobbies is actually our local FLGS, and for those of you who don't know what that means, it's from the local game store, uh, which, full disclosure, I am one of the owners of. So there will be much bias. There will be much bias. Um, but we are pretty great. I Make mean, sure I that one of your great. friends owns part of a hobby store. Yes. Well, I think my other friend, oh, another friend of mine owns the other half. That's so correct. Yeah, you're you got your ends for sure. So, so you've been playing D and D since you've been in grade nine, and I'm I'm taking this out of context because it was in our first take. But you mentioned earlier that you've done a little Pathfinder yeah, just, before as well. Just a little bit of Pathfinder. Most of my uh, uh, RPG experience has been uh, through Dungeons and Dragons, and also through like some video games, you know, Witcher and. Oblivion and yeah, 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 yeah. Like, maybe those Elder Scrolls games. There's a little bit of the RPG element. Yes, for sure, absolutely. Um, but one thing I think that kind of helps with the role playing element is uh, having having a background in theater. Yes, that it does. Which is uh, a lot of fun. I do. Not that I have one, by the way. <laughs> I, just, you're, I think you're right. It probably does help. Yet it's buddy. <laughs> Yet, yeah. Uh, because 
at its core, the role playing element of Dungeons and Dragons is improv. Yep. Improvisational. Yep. As our as our collective friend Ryan likes to say, D and D is basically improv with dice. Yeah, pretty well. So so there you go. Um, so that's a little bit, I guess, about uh, both of my friends here. Although one thing I will mention, because I did say earlier, one thing will be neat is to uh, match some faces with some names. If you listen to my DM journal notes on running the End of the Abyss campaign, is Autumn Willow plays Bard the ha- or the Half Orc Barbarian. Yeah. That's always a bit of a tongue twister <laughs> for me to say. And Josh plays Uta the Tortle, which is a tortoise person. Yes. Monk. Uh, and both of the characters are very cool. Um, can you can you tell me just a little bit about your characters that you play? Like, I don't need an in-depth backstory, but just so they can I- identify a little bit of wh- how you role play this character. Whoever wants to go, I'll go. Yeah, you go first. Okay. Uh, so, Anth originally had four people for his campaign, and then he called me one day. He's like, "Can you come be our extra person?" And I'm like, "Sure. Why didn't you ask me to begin with?" He's like, "Cause you're always gone." <laughs> Like, Accurate. Okay, fine. <laughs> so um, I wanted to pick. Uh, I, I, I usually play like a halfling of some kind or some sort of humanoid, and so I was looking through the uh, all races for D and D, and one of our rules for our campaign was it had to be like a, an official race. Yes, right? I, I basically told them that if they could play. You can yeah, play it. anything you want as long as it's published. So I found something from the Tomb of Annihilation, mm-hmm. and it was the Turtle. And I just, I didn't even read its stats at the beginning. I'm like, that's it. That's me. I'm going, I'm going with that. <laughs> Good. Turtle person. That's perfect. And then I was like, oh, what kind of class am I going to play? Monk. Yeah. Definitely go Master, Master Ugwe from Kung Fu Panda. That literally, so there's a local artist. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys or not. I think I was keeping it as a surprise, but hey, whatever. Um, there's a local artist, uh, named Brandon, uh, and you guys might know who I'm talking about. You probably know who I'm talking about. We were playing board games with him last night. Yes, we were. Um, and, uh, I asked him if, if he would be, if he had the time, if he was interested, if he would actually, like, do a sketch of our party. Like, if he would draw our party out. What? Yeah, and, and he was like, he was like, yeah, I'll totally do that. That's awesome. Um, so you guys have something to look forward to there. But, uh, I was, I was describing to him just, well, this is generally speaking, you know, the character's race, the character's class, what they tend to look like or wear, and what kind of weapon they tend to wield. And that was really all the information that he wanted, and the rest he would just come up with. Uh, and as soon as I mentioned your character, he's like, oh, you mean Master Ugwe from Kung Fu Panda? And then he sent me a picture of him. <laughs> yep. I was like, yeah, I guess that's exactly what it is. That's essentially it. Yeah. I also thought that... Uh... That's just my dog that you can hear Do you whining. need to go outside? She doesn't. She just needs attention. Enough. <laughs> Teacher voice, enough. Teacher voice. Yeah. Um, I picked the turtle also because of the role playing capabilities. Mm. Because... Can, can you give us a taste of Uta? Oh my gosh. Uta speaks from his heart. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. <laughs> also, considering I have a seven in charisma, so mm-hmm. I have a good old minus two. That's true. I thought I would really play up that like slow talking tortoise kind of voice. Yeah. Because like, just with a minus two to my charisma, uh, it just makes sense to not be a very good communicator. Yeah, and, and, it, and it works well both to create a sense of atmosphere to your character, but also it's provided some comedic relief in some situations where I remember in our very, very first session... Um, where they're basically escaping a drought prison and they're all shackled. And um, they said, well, can I get out of the shackles? Can I break them? And I was like, yeah, you absolutely can. You know, the book gives a strength check DC to try and do. Uh, DC, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is difficulty check or the difficulty, you know, that you have to beat. And so he rolled and he blew it away. Um, and just very easily was like, Dink! and broke his iron chains. And the, the joke was that he had literally started breaking his bind since the start of the session. But just move so slowly that at that precise moment they were taunt enough to break. Uh, so stuff like that, you know, works really well. Um, From a meta race. level too, speaking slowly gives me a chance to think things over. Yeah, before that's I that's also a good point. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I was thinking of the practical benefits of, of the tortoise. So, was that the first thing you thought about? No, 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 no. no. Okay, and what's it, now? I know because I'm not even sure how 
developed this is because I've only really kind of asked this of the players maybe once or twice. But what's a little bit of the history of your character? Like, where does he come from and what's his objective? Other than get out of the Underdark. <laughs> I was uh, I was reading, like, the fluff behind the turtles. Okay. And they're kind of like, they're nomadic travelers. Okay. And they're, they're, they travel, like, the wetlands and stuff like that. And so my character is a monk, and so he's traveling the world to learn about you know, the natural order of things and training and meditating and right. kind of just bouncing from one place to another very slowly. Um, and that's just kind of the character's And that works well for a monk, Generic background, right? yeah. Like, that's kind of like a very, you know, person of the world, right? Citizen of the world. Yes. <laughs> I'm a citizen of the world. Yeah. I'm a <laughs> metropole. <laughs> and a cosmopole. <laughs> I'm all the Pauls. I'm all the Pauls. Meet my friend Pauls. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's Utah. Like that's basically the background I gave him. It's not a whole lot of detail. It's just that he's traveled from one place to another, and that since he was hatched and was able to walk on his two legs, he set off. Yeah, and it's funny because when you put that out there at first, I was like, "Oh, Josh, so lazy." <laughs> and then as it because I'm super lazy, and, and then as it went forward though. Um, I was like, you know what? It adds kind of like a mystique to the character where like, you know, we know a little bit about Bard. We know a little bit about um, the three other party members that we have. But uh, what you just heard is about all we know of Uta. And so I'll be interesting to, interested to see, especially because I know some of the fun little surprises that come up in the campaign, oh, is I'll be interested to see whether more of his background and, and his personality start to come out just due to events. Yeah. Um, or if he just continues to almost be, you know, the, I mean, he's not, I won't, I won't really akin him to the Clint Eastwood man with no name kind of thing, right. but he does have that very kind of like, I'm just here and I just help out and I'm powerful when you expect me not to be. And then that's it, you know? Yeah. Well, that's kind of his shtick too. And that's going to reveal like little tidbits about the character as we go on and meet said surprises. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is, uh, I don't know, maybe you'll find out why Utah is good in a bind and why he's yeah. very slow to move when we're traveling as a party, but is like the quickest <laughs> character in combat by far. <laughs> yeah, that's actually really And funny. the toughest at, uh, yeah. what are we at, level three? You know what? Yeah. I, I don't know if this was intentional or not, um, but he very much reminds me of Yoda. Yeah. You know, he's he's got that calmness, that slowness, but then as soon as a fight starts, he's like Bruce Lee. Yeah, but Yoda would have much higher charisma. <laughs> Yoda, does have, Yoda does have much higher charisma, let's be honest. Okay. Well, very cool. So thanks for sharing with you a bit about your character. So Autumn Willow, you are playing a man. Yes. And that's all I'll say. No. Uh, you're, you're, <laughs> I'm playing a man. Yeah, you're playing a half-orc barbarian whose name is... Bard. Which makes everything I do very complicated. <laughs> Uh, because we also have a bard, like the class of a bard in, in the group, um, which is fine, though. It's It's been funny in some situations as well. But maybe you can also give us a bit of like, a, well, you know, who is bard? What's the what's his shtick, so to speak? Um, and like, why do you like playing him? So bard is, he's basically a half-orc barbarian, but he was raised by his human father. And he never actually met his mother. He was dropped off after... Um, after he was born. So he doesn't know any orcish. He's never met a full orc other than in the first session. And um, he... Just pouring espresso here, guys. His, his hey. father is um, very encouraging. Like, you know, he was a favorite. Bard was a favorite um, amongst, like, his villagers, essentially, because yes. he would protect them from thieves and stuff. Yeah, he was basically, like, the folk hero of the village, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So he's, like, you know, very kind of, like... Uh, nice and good with people kind of character, but he he thinks he's really smart because his father always encouraged him, told him he could do like anything he wanted to. So he like through all this encouragement was like, yeah, like, I'm super, I'm super smart. So he always tries to do like, the intelligent things, but he's so like how <laughs> like and this is I've never asked you this question before, and, and this is a great form to ask this question. <laughs> how dumb is he? <laughs> like I mean, like if you could compare him. To another like notable character or pop culture figure, how how dumb is he? I'm really bad at pop culture. <laughs> like a Michael um, Scott. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know that's 
Michael Scott, yeah, pretty much. Wow, that's actually like, really yeah, <laughs> yeah, that seems to fit. Yeah. I, I I was almost thinking like he's not Peter Griffin dumb. No, he's but not he that but dumb. he might be Homer Simpson dumb. Yeah. Well, Homer often thinks he has great ideas and they just kind of don't. But I like the Michael Scott thing a lot. I am usually. the sage of the group. He, he's always... <laughs> yes, this is true. Yeah, like, he is always <coughs> trying to think of good ideas. Like, you know, even with the, the statue thing um, in the um, Kuatoa homeland. Right. Where he, he he's like, this, this statue... Um, this idol or whatever is their power source, obviously. So I must destroy it. Oh and I yeah, just yeah, took yeah. Like three turns. Yeah. Destroying it. So, so to add a little context, what she's talking about, they were they were captured uh, by this enemy faction that are religious fanatics. Um, they were they were prepped to be sacrificed to their kind of god, uh, even though it was a it was a ploy by the other faction. And long story short, uh, the fight breaks out, and Bard's idea is to say, well. <laughs> Clearly, this shrine over here is everything. It is where the power comes from. If I destroy that, then we win. And that was not the case at all. But Bard, that was his. That was his thing. So he spent like the first few rounds of combat with his. What you have a big battle axe, yeah. just smashing this shrine to bits, and everyone else is off fighting the cult leader kind of thing. Uh, and you did join the fight eventually, but it was just very funny, very very character driven, which was awesome. And what happened when you destroyed the idol, Robin Willow? Nothing. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> what I think would have been really funny, awesome. and, it, and it's just dramatic. too bad that the timing didn't work out, is what would have been really funny is if you broke the shrine at the same time that they killed the cult leader, so that the benefits of destroying the cult leader, your character thought was because you destroyed the shrine. That would, that have, would have been golden. Or the demogorgon appears when you. Destroy or the demogorgon. Yeah, exactly. What have I done? <laughs> What's a coincidence? Yeah, I, I can't believe I've done this. What's a twist? Yeah, exactly. So so no, that's that's awesome. Um, so so yeah, and and everything that you heard on a Willow talk about Bard, um, that that is known to the rest of the characters. There was a a, a bit of a of a starting piece to one of our sessions. I don't think it was last time, but our session before where it was like, okay, you're got to spend a few hours now just rowing on the dark lake. So you guys have time to chat. Maybe this is a good opportunity to get to know each other better. Uh, and you were there for that one, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We, we've had a couple players step in and out. And in fact, one of the reasons we're doing this video, or, or I guess the, the motivation to start this series was because this week we actually aren't going to have a session. We have too many people who can't make it. So, uh, we're, yeah, that's I not know. the reason you can't make it. You, well, no, yeah, that's true. I can't make, I, to be fair, I can't make the regular time. You're an absent God. And, and yeah, I am an absentee God. Uh, I couldn't make the regular time, uh, because my sister's birthday's tomorrow. Uh, and we tried for a couple other times. As an only time child, slots. I don't see that. As you don't, you don't see that. As <laughs> Uh, or even a priority. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but we, we tried to work out a couple of the different times and, and and it couldn't work out. So we said, well, then we'll just skip this week. And uh, and I wanted to have something to put out anyway. So here we are. But okay, so you have an idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you have an idea now of uh, who these people are, what this video series is, a little bit of the characters they play. Uh, do you guys have any preference on whether we start with like a, uh, you know, your experience as a player? doing rpgs or would you prefer to start with the idea of this has been my experience playing out of the abyss um either yes. or either, either or either. Uh, yeah. okay well i'll tell you what then why don't we why don't we start specific and expand outwards so uh we'll start with the your experience playing out of the abyss cool. so we started this campaign when at the top of february or something like that i think that yeah. sounds right yeah about that yeah yeah because we've had... Um, this is like episode six now come up, isn't it? Uh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah, we've had we've had five uh, sessions, and we play once a week every Sunday night. Um, and uh, this was immediately on the coattails of finishing a prior campaign that we all were playing in some capacity as well. So uh, so we've been playing for, for five weeks or so. Uh, what have you guys thought of it so far? I mean, the, the audience here at large obviously gets my thoughts every week. Uh, but what have you guys been thinking about the campaign and the character you've chosen to play and all that kind of jazz? I haven't played like an, an organized, well, I've played an organized campaign, like, obviously, mean, but I haven't played Careful, it. Ryan will watch this. I know. <laughs> and it, his world was so detailed that it, was. It, has, like, it has a history. 
Like, it was some Game of Thrones level I, I stuff. I think it's yeah. his own calendar. Yeah, that's right. That's so detailed. Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's the George R. R. Martin of our yeah. generation. It's, it's actually quite sad. He just, he's the Greek fisherman. It's guy. quite sad that Ryan isn't as sad as he used to be because when he was sad, he had lots of time to create great content. That's true. And okay. now he's yeah. less sad and has less time for that. Well, and also, yeah, I guess what I'm saying is I just wish Ryan was sad. <laughs> No. Oh my god. No, no? Am I the only one? I'm glad yeah. he's glad, I guess. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's okay. It's okay to be selfish. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> what I mean is that it's been nice to to play uh, like a, like a published, a, an official, like, yeah. published D&D campaign because I haven't done that probably since grade 12. And uh, it's interesting to follow the story um, that I'm sure a lot of other people have embarked on, right? Now, and why is that, though? Like, why, why, why do you say that? Like what 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 do you find as a player experientially is the difference between saying I'm playing this person's homebrew even though it uses the D twenty fifth edition rule system and we're playing a a thing that you know was kind of written from start to finish by someone at you know Wizards of the Coast and I know that's not necessarily the defining feature but what would you say the difference is for you as a player? Well, this is it's a new story for me. It's a it's uh, a world I haven't been in for a long time, so mm-hmm. it's kind of neat to, to go back the, and explore the world a different... The world of Faerun? <laughs> yeah. It's cool to explore a, a different facet, too, of the D&D world, because I've yes. never been to the Underdark before, like, yeah. ever. Yeah, different setting. <laughs> like, ever. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it's neat to explore that, that other setting. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. This is going to sound very, very corny. Okay. Yeah, hey, your your face is fully in frame now. Do you want to just Italian talk to me the rest of the time? You can be oh right my in God. my space. Bear with me. Yeah. <laughs> Bear with me. Um, it's cool like watching your first DM experience. And I think this is a is really because I I think you're enjoying it. I am quite actually. a bit. So that's actually good. And I think that having the um like I don't know if it's step by step or or whatever, but having that organization behind you is, yeah. is making this a very like fluid gaming experience there's not a lot of meta gaming everything very like well explained Mm -hmm. that might also be due to like the players you have oh totally but uh i find everything's very organized it's very fluid um and it's uh i don't know it's kind of fun exploring that new world like i said and and just to touch on a couple points um that you that yeah i will touch your points um and then we'll get autumn willow's uh you know perspective as well but it is my first time uh, realistically DMing for more than just maybe one or two sessions yep. um, and, and tackling an entire campaign, whether it's one I've made or one that, you know, D&D put out. <clears throat> and, and you're right, it's been a great experience. It, I did a lot of prep because I was very nervous about it. I didn't want it to be one of those things where it felt or it felt to you guys like I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so I wanted to make sure I kind of had everything uh, under wraps. But much like you said, you know, a huge... Shout out to the players because you guys and our three other members are really, really good at not doing a lot of that metagaming. And for those of you who don't play RPGs or don't know what metagaming is, um, when when you play D&D, you're kind of making a social contract between yourself, the other players, and the DM, which is to say that you know we are going to act with a, a sense of suspended disbelief and that this is the world we inhabit. When we talk, we talk from the perspective of our character, uh, like 90% of the time, and uh, and we stay within that role because it is a role-playing game. Don't break the fourth wall! Don't do it! <laughs> Don't do it. Not This isn't Deadpool. Onwell's wearing a Deadpool belt. That doesn't give her the right, yeah. though. Does not give you the right. Um, but, yeah. So my players have been really great at not participating in that meta gaming of stepping outside of that role and saying... Oh, I have I have rules questions, or you know, they'll rather than say I want to attack the thing, they want to say like, oh, Bard rushes at it with his axe and howls, and you know, so that's the kind of stuff that that you want to kind of transition from, and and that's what can be difficult for new players is learning that sense of staying in that role, and you know, in the campaign that Ryan did that we all played in previous. How many players did we have in that party? Like, we fluctuated between like, 6 and 10? Yeah. Oh, man, it was like 6 and people. 12. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it was a lot. And Everyone was talking at once. It was kind of like a big family dinner. Yeah. It was like, I run! No, I run! I run! I eat! This is I crazy. eat! Did you hear me, Ryan? I'm eating! It's like... And and it was like that, and um, you know the reason that yeah Ryan Ryan had uh, had some challenges that just come with having a party that big, um, which is the last thing I wanted to touch on real quick here is that you know the players that I'm playing with 
Um, you know, it's not all of the people that we played with previously. Yeah. And the only reason I did that was because it's my first time DMing. And I didn't want that challenge that Ryan took on. I said, you know what? I'm gonna the, the I'm pretty sure the campaign is built for four players, um, like kind of standard. So I'm gonna just do it for four people because it's my first time and I don't want to make it any more difficult for myself. Than five I have now. To. And then five, yeah, and and actually five doesn't been a problem at all, especially because yeah, Mara's got her toy now. Um, especially because um, you know we usually have at least one person. Uh, that can't make it for one reason or another. I think maybe one time ever we've had all five. Yeah, no, I think we've had twice. Twice, okay. I think. Um, so yes, but it, it's been a good experience for me either way, and thanks for bringing up some of those points, um, just in in the differentials between playing those two types of, of campaigns. But what what have your thoughts been? They, it's been really <clears throat> good. It's been really interesting. It's just very different from, like you said, the whole like really big campaign. Because I've I've only ever done with like large large groups right okay. where it's like it's kind of difficult to keep track of who's doing what at yeah. what points and like how to like be like okay <clears> one <throat> second you do this and then we'll go back to you and like all of that so mm. it's did i do my role for eating <laughs> did i do i have to do it oh my god and also you know it's been it's been very different i kind of i like how it's it's very serious mm. um because like the first like year and a half that I played, it was like you know, we we just backflipped to for no reason and oh <laughs> like char- character wise character, yeah. character wise like it was just kind of like mayhem, but <laughs> um we'd right, be like right, oh right. is this in the town no okay well can it be in the town yeah. that kind of idea so and was that for for Josh's or for Ryan's for Josh's for Josh's okay for Ryan's it was the backflipping. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been it's been really different and um I really like like all the like NPCs and how you use them mm, okay. for like um like Eldis and her sacrifice. I really like right. that whole thing where she you know, she saves us from like a group of four drow and like it's within her character, but yep. I mean she's like we're like, Oh, we can just revive her, like it's fine, but like you said, like you wouldn't have made her sacrifice herself if yeah, you were and that was a harder one for me too because like <laughs> to 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 again to kind of go a little deeper into what you're talking about with the NPCs is that this this out of the abyss campaign, um, your characters start in a prison with I think nine nine or ten NPCs that are just basically like well okay DM you're playing too and you have like ten personalities to keep track of. <laughs> um, and that was something that I was very daunting going into it. Um, and it's, it's become a little bit more manageable because certain NPCs have, you know, died along the way or escaped in some cases, <laughs> yep. uh, you know, Bupido killing off one of the other ones and, and running into the darkness kind of thing. Can't trust him. Can't trust him. Can't trust the Darrow. Um, but yeah, that was, that was definitely a challenge. And just trying to to play within the realm of those characters, um, it's been nice for it to be more manageable. And that was some of the onus behind some of these characters dying. But I'm glad 